I am Thomas, and the Ed Sullivan Show, staple in American media history, from 48 to 71, Jay Leno, Conan, um, whoever you could, um, uh, uh, Carson, all of these men, I'm sure, would have said that the Ed Sullivan Show, Ed Sullivan, was an inspiration as to why they got into business. Ed Sullivan and the Ed Sullivan Show. Ed Sullivan Show uh, was, you know, a television variety show, but it was a lot more than that. Uh, you could it, it set a record from forty eight to seventy one, and this is the grave of Ed Sullivan. Set a record from uh, you know forty eight to seventy one. As the longest variety show in broadcast his, broadcast history, one of the fondest, dearest pop culture memories back then was the Ed Sullivan Show. And back then, you have to remember, they didn't have MTV, right? You know, there was no social media. There was no, uh, you know, what's the newest band? What's the newest trend? Ed Sullivan back then, introduced all of that. All the acts that he introduced in his variety show, the Monkees, the Doors, the Temptations, anyone that you could think of back then that was of relevance in that time period uh, was on that show. And, you know, he, Ed Sullivan, said that it was nothing about politics, he didn't, um, you know, he, uh, politics. He did not care about politics, about who you voted for, who you liked, who you're voting in the presidential election. It's about entertainment and putting good acts for people uh, to enjoy, enjoy to watch. One of the acts that he prided himself on presenting these, sometimes these acts that were never heard of, to the forefront. One of them that he kind of ugh, feels so horrible that he missed the boat on was Elvis Presley. He really did not have a good vibe about Elvis Presley at all in their early onset uh, there. Um, he kind of felt that Elvis Presley kind of, I guess, rubbed him the wrong way. Um, and he, he, they were, he, Elvis was trying to come on um, for a couple of times, um, but uh, he didn't. Uh, he he didn't want to. He didn't want to do it. He kind of avoided it uh, until finally, uh, when Sullivan was not on the show and someone was stepping in, uh, they introduced uh, Presley. And look. Elvis Presley went on to stardom, and Sullivan later said that he uh, missed the boat on Presley, and he was wrong about his initial thoughts about him. So that's why he said, because he was so upset, he's never going to do that again. He wanted, you know, to not miss something like that, not let, uh, you know, keep an open head, an open mind. And one of them, he's credited for introducing the Beatles. Here is the Beatles you just seen to the American public. The Beatles were on uh, the Ed Sullivan show as well. Uh, so, a large uh, variety of... Uh, You know, acts that appeared on Ed Sullivan. He did not care. He went against what a lot of, uh, you know, uh, what, 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 what the media might think of as being the right thing to do or the wrong, you know, where he, where he knew he would get criticism for it, for doing it. If he believed that it was in... The right thing to do to bring that act. And, you know, again, 
po politics aside, he would bring them in. Um, born in 1903, uh, he passed away in um, 73. Um, you know, uh, after a short illness with uh, with cancer. He was involved in radio as well. Um, the comma, uh, as a columnist as well. And P. E. Sullivan had dabbled in entertainment. He, uh, if you should not know it, he, he produced vaudeville shows, which he appeared as master of ceremonies in the 20s and in the 30s, directing a radio program over the original WABC, which is now WCBS, and organizing benefit reviews for various causes. Um... In 48, Marlo Williams convinced the CBS network to hire Sullivan to do a weekly Sunday night TV variety show. Toast of the Town later became the Ed Sullivan Show. Uh, it was broadcasted uh, from the Maxine Elliott Theater. That was on West 39th Street, New York City. Uh, and it moved... Um, to CBS TV Studio 50. That's at 1697 Broadway. 53rd Street here in New York City. And that since has been renamed to the Ed Sullivan Theater. And it was actually, again, Letterman. The late uh, home of the, the late show of David Letterman. I'm sure you speak with Letterman, one of the, the greatest uh, as well. Ed Sullivan definitely... An inspiration. Initially, you know, they gave this show back then. The critics gave this show poor reviews, uh, saying that Sullivan got where he is by not by having a personality, but by having no personality. How about that? In Time Magazine, one of the critics wrote, What exactly is Ed Sullivan's talent? His mannerisms on camera were so awkward and that some viewers believed that the host suffered from Bell's palsy. This is in 1955. Someone wrote that. Hmm. As long as... Uh, as long as someone else has talent, Ed does nothing, but he does it better than anyone else in television. A typical show should would feature a vaudeville act, acrobats, jugglers, magicians, one or two popular comedians, a singing star, a hot jukebox favorite, a figure from legitimate theater, and for kids, a visit with the puppet Papo Giggio, the little Italian mouse or popular athlete. Go figure, right? Little did they know. Sullivan was a guy that had a sense of humor. Even encouraged impersonators. William Jordan was a, especially one. To imitate him on his show. Remember, Johnny Carson did a pretty good imp impression. Joan Rivers used to imitate Sullivan's unique posture. Exaggerated Ed Sullivan's stiffness, his raised shoulders, his nasal tenure, his phrasing, along with using some of his common introductions, such as, and now, right here on our stage, for all you youngsters out there, so on and so forth. A very popular figure in entertainment for many years, and just go back on YouTube. The power, the beauty of YouTube to kind of see what Ed Sullivan is all about. There's a, a catalog, literally, of all the guests and all the musical acts that were on 
Ed Sullivan show and it, it, it just goes on and on and on and on and they're very memorable uh, moments uh, with the Ed Sullivan show uh, on there um, his grave is actually here it's in Fern Cliff Cemetery um, give you the exact coordinates and i'll be very honest with you it was hard extremely hard to find because if you looked at the video they all you know the the graves all look the same uh and you really got to know where you're going if you don't it, it's very confusing i lucked out because luckily i bumped into someone he was able to show it to me but normally there's really no one around and, uh, you know, you hear stories about how, you know, they really don't like to direct you. They want to keep it private. But, you know, um, near the elevator, as you could see. But how you would get to that elevator, I would not be able to tell you. I could tell you it's in the Ferncliff, uh, Ferncliff Mausoleum. It's Unit 8. Alclove G and the crypt is 122. The grave of the great Ed. How, how did you feel coming up on Sullivan, that board, Ed? Ferncliff Cemetery, right in Hartsdale, <laughs> what's just the county? Here he is, <laughs> right now. Good to see you. We were right. nice to be here with you. We're going to talk with the. Uh, Terry Gallinoy later, who's written a book about The Tonight Show, but I think before The Tonight Show went on, believe it or not, almost 20 years ago, you'd already been on the air, right? Yeah, we're, we've been on now. Uh, we're in our 24th year. 24 years? That's an incredible record. It really is. And you have... We've talked about some of your early days. You started a lot of people that most people have forgotten. Who was on your first radio show and who was a big major star now that made his first appearance? Jack Benny made his first appearance on your radio show. I was back in when? 19... Oh, yeah, the day. Lord. Back in the 1920s. Good Lord. That's a long haul, yeah. isn't it? Do you miss Sunday nights, not going out Sunday nights? Now, I yes. know you're going to do specials, yeah. but you're going to miss that? Yeah, you do. You, do. you, you know, it'd be like you would all of a sudden, instead of doing your night, yeah. every show, show every uh, night, huh? uh, you, you didn't have it anymore, and you feel, you feel lost. 